The MRS conference is coming to a close. Soon everyone will head back home to put what they've learned to practice. But don't go anywhere yet because MRS TV is still here with one more episode packed full of insight into the most exciting topics in material science. I'm Katie Brace, here for the last episode of Fall 2022's MRS TV. We've had tons of great interviews and events to cover this season, and we're closing out today with another great batch. We'll check back in with our meeting chairs to find out what stood out to them most about this year's meeting. Then we'll learn from Awards Committee Chair Savine Mathadu what it takes to earn the Materials Research Society's recognition. We'll find out more about MRS's special interest groups and how to get involved with them. And then we'll sit down with Kelsey Storzinger, this year's Nelson Buck Robinson Award winner. Plus, we'll close out our tour of innovative groups across materials research with Indiana University in Bloomington and Texas A&M. But first things first, let's jump right into our conversation with Samuel Stoop, this year's recipient of MRS's highest honor, the Von Hippel Award. We're here with Dr. Samuel Stoop of Northwestern University and the winner of this year's Von Hippel Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am very proud uh, to have received uh, this award. Deeply honored. I admire greatly who got it in the past. And so I'm extremely pleased and flattered. So tell us a little bit about your research and how it's applicable to the world. Well, I'm interested in soft materials. And uh, back in the 1990s, uh, I was working on polymers. At the time, I felt that uh, in order to really revolutionize soap materials for technologies at large, you really needed to go beyond traditional polymers. And this is where the concept of supramolecular materials came from. Basically, uh, that means that you create materials with molecules, yes, of course, but uh, you don't stop at making molecules. You go further and you design molecules to interact with each other in specific ways by non-covalent bonds. So what that does is it makes materials that are much more dynamic than the normal soft matter. This happens to be a great opportunity uh, for biomaterials used in regenerative medicine. We have discovered very recently that um, we can tune their motions within the material. And tuning those motions allows materials to talk to cells more effectively. By focusing on the ability of materials to signal cells through their motions, uh, we discovered that an unprecedented level of reversal in paralysis after severe trauma was possible. Basically, what we observed is that when motions were tuned to be a, at a certain level, then uh, the, the severe injury that caused paralysis basically um, transformed into um, the growth of uh, or the regeneration of tissues in the spinal cord, which is very difficult to achieve. In other words, the, the, the animal regained mm -hmm. function and was able to walk normally after being fully paralyzed. So this is very exciting to observe that it was a soft material, uh, a self-assembling soft mm -hmm. material that is injected as a liquid then becomes a soft structure in the spinal cord that was able to do that. And, and that basically uh, is something that we will be able to use in, in the brain as well to address stroke and brain injury and neurodegenerative diseases to create new um, therapies. And so having uh, soft materials that can actually uh, restore function in the brain in the spinal cord is a huge thing and it is all rooted in designing them molecularly and supramolecularly, meaning that you design them uh, to interact with each other, the mm, molecules right. in a certain way, therefore move a certain way, therefore signal cells effectively. 
And Dr. Samuel Stoop, you are on the cutting edge of this and the recipient of this year's Von Hippel Award. And we thank you so much for talking and sharing all this knowledge with us as thank well. Thank you for inviting me to the interview. It's really exciting to be here in Boston to see the meeting run smoothly. I feel it is the biggest reward to see the success of this meeting after all the planning and developing of this meeting for such a long time. I've talked to a lot of colleagues at the meeting who have you know, kind of echoed the sentiment that it's just so much better uh, to, to do this in person and have those little chats and conversations and to catch up because it's really the people that make the science and, and the research rewarding. Some of the highlights of this meeting include actually random ad hoc conversations in the hallways with all of my colleagues and friends that I haven't seen in so long. Many of us have been meeting on Zoom only or going to very few meetings and so the MRS brings together such an international community of all people who are, who are material science aficionados. So seeing old friends and colleagues is definitely a highlight. I was very impressed to see that the number of attendees uh, back to the pre-pandemic level, uh, we're, which is very exciting. And another highlight uh, as a meeting chair, uh, just in the poster awards, there are just so many awards, it's very hard to make the final selection among all the great work. For me, it's that sense of energy at this meeting, right? Coming out of the pandemic, uh, you know, I love those chance conversations you have outside in the hall, outside of a, of a session where you start chatting and the next thing you know, you've been there for half an hour and somebody's opening up their laptop and you're looking at data and then you're going to lunch and you know, it turns into like a two hour, you know, scientific conversation about things. So for me, the highlight has been seeing that return to energy as we get more and more of the community back together in, in one place. The amount of resources that we were provided by the wonderful um, MRS staff was, was uh, perfect. And so while the job of the meeting chairs is very challenging and involved, it's not ambiguous. It's uh, exciting to be the meeting chair, a lot of work and MRS staff provide a lot of support. Uh, my uh, advice to the future meeting chairs is to work with MRS headquarters team, do a great job and enjoy the process. Coming into the 50th year of, of MRS, you know, I'm excited to have us back in San Francisco. It's close to where I'm, I'm from, so we're gonna come in force in, <laughs> in, in our group and, and, and be part of it. And, you know, I think it's a good chance to kind of think about where MRS has come over the years and everything that it does for the society. And I think we're at a point where we're also changing the, the future directions and it kind of you know, starts a new era for MRS as well. is a university-based and multidisciplinary team of chemists and data scientists creating knowledge and data-backed methods for developing optical materials by design. We're headed to Bloomington, Indiana to learn more about their work. We are a team of chemists and data scientists, which is a pretty unique combination here at Indiana University and the University of Copenhagen. And we're trying to learn the rules of how to make fluorescent materials and really to combine data-backed approaches to make them faster and better than anyone else has done it before. At the heart of our project is a new material that we call SMILES, which is the brightest fluorescent material that has been made. And this project is sponsored by the NSF's DEMREF program, which gives us the mandate to use data to really explore what we can really use these materials for in optical materials design. There's also what SMILES enables. So anything you can imagine that you know works really well as a liquid, well now you can begin to think about using that technology, but as a solid form. That's where SMILES really shines. We are here with Savine Mathadu, MRS Awards Committee Chair. Hello, thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Well, MRS offers a number of awards spanning a career of someone, 
from graduate student to postdoc and beyond. Tell us a little bit about the awards program, who's eligible and what it entails. So the awards program is one of the longest existing programs in MRS and it continually grows and its aim is to recognize the best and brightest amongst the whole breadth of what we have in our technical society. So that goes all the way from very early career graduate students and even undergraduate students in our programs, all the way up to the premier awards for career recognition in pioneering materials research. Um, anybody is eligible and anybody can be nominated. We have many of our awards that you don't even need to be an MRS member to be recognized for. So it's, it's open to the broadest possible community within our material science community. So how can someone nominate or perhaps ask people to get nominated? The easiest way to get nominated is to first go to the mrs.org slash awards website and you'll see the various awards that are there within the program. And each one has different nomination uh, requirements but also talks about what we're looking for for the awardees within that field. And generally, anybody from our community can nominate anybody else for the award. And we're specifically looking to have the broadest activity within our community being nominating uh, the widest amount of people possible, including those from underrepresented groups, uh, that haven't traditionally been recognized by uh, awards programs. So what's the importance of winning an MRS award? Well, for many people that work in industry or national labs or academia, they receive their internal recognition based on the recognition showed by their peer group. And with MRS being the peer group of most of the attendees, when they receive these awards and go back to their home institutions, it provides a metric for their achievements and their accomplishments and their esteem within our society. And so it's a, it's a matter, it's a, a peer recognition aspect of it that makes it important for the external employers, but also internally to say, we really like what you're doing. And if someone is up for an award, what is your biggest piece of advice? Biggest piece of advice is to be honest, find good nominators, uh, talk about the achievements of the people that you've enabled and mentored uh, and how you've made a true impact on material science, whether you're a graduate student all the way up to the Pinnacle Awards. Thanks, Sabine, for taking the time to talk with us today. Now let's take a look at the Materials Research Society's special interest groups. We'll learn who they're for and how you can get involved. The Career Advancement Committee is a volunteer member organization within the MRS that's basically focused on promoting the careers of our members across all their different stages. So we have subcommittees for, for students, for university chapters, uh, and also uh, broadening participation groups. The special interest groups, or SIGs, are designed for members who want to engage with the materials research community um, in a sort of a context that is more specialized to their interests or identities. And there are six of them. They are uh, diversity in academia, underrepresented ethnic uh, and racial minority students, that's UREM students. There's um, researchers of color. There's the awards nominations committee. There's women in material science and engineering. And there's LGBTQ+. And so these are the SIGs that we have at, mo at the moment. These are our initial offerings. The other thing is not one size doesn't fit all. So we can't have a solution that works for one particular special interest group and uh, that apply to another. So we're, we're in that process of identifying the appropriate programs that would be beneficial for those groups. So I think um, what we can look for or hope to see is that the members of the SIGs and their leaders will create events both in person at the meetings as well as in between meetings and virtual events that will allow those interest groups to kind of um, coordinate activities that support them in all the various ways that you can imagine. And so the hope going forward is that these groups will sort of evolve to support the community as the community needs. We welcome anyone who's interested to participate in these SIGs. And I want to make sure that people know it's not just individuals who identify as belonging to a particular SIG, so much as individuals who want to support efforts on behalf of that SIG. So you don't have to, for example, be 
uh, a researcher of color to want to support the efforts of that community. So if you want to join, uh, you can, of course, email me or Kalpana Kasi, who's the Career Advancement Chair. You can also email Michelle Feeder, who's the um, Headquarters Liaison for our group. Around spring next year, uh, the goals of the SIGs would be to sort of work on some projects uh, and activities and programs. And again, the, the key thing is they're all going to be different. They're not going to be the same. So, uh, so that will be the goal, to sort of uh, identify some very specific uh, targeted plans under each SIG in, in order to ensure good, good representation. Thanks to Rebecca and Kelpana for sharing how special interest groups operate and why they're so important to the MRS. Now, the Center for Research Excellence on Dynamically Deformed Solids, an NNSA program, is focused on preparing students for future careers in stockpile stewardship with the national labs. Let's take a closer look. The Center for Research Excellence on Dynamically Deformed Solids, or CREDS, is a research center funded by the National Nuclear Security Administration. It's a part of the Department of Energy responsible for maintaining the nuclear deterrent of the United States. Since the signing of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, the United States has certified that its nuclear deterrent will work without any nuclear testing, only using basic research. When a nuclear weapon goes off, all the parts of it deform at extremely high rates. To certify a nuclear weapon without testing it, you have to be able to predict precisely how that deformation is going to occur. That's where CREDS comes in. CREDS provides a unique academic experience for students to gain the skills that they need for stockpile stewardship. You'll definitely learn a lot. I know I have. And you'll walk away a better scientist and better researcher and ready to uh, take your skills to whatever's next in your career. I would hopefully be a baker or perhaps a chef because I uh, have a strong passion for baking in particular. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of that. I was almost trying to uh, yeah, become a, a cook and a chef and uh, only then decided to study chemistry, which is a bit of cooking as well. So in my free time and for my group, I really enjoy baking massive cakes. So I would definitely be a baker, I think. <laughs> yeah, if I want to say this, I want to explore the world. There are so many interesting out, out there. If I was in the science, I would be probably painting or drawing something creative. If I wasn't in science, I'd become a scuba diving instructor, like 100%. That sounds like the best job in the world, <laughs> other than science, obviously. In 2021, MRS Bulletin launched MRS Bulletin Impact, a premier outlet for high-impact original materials research. Original research articles feature hot topics, innovative work, and foundational contributions. Learn more about submitting a manuscript at mrs.org slash bulletin impact. 
Thank you to our 2022 MRS Fall Meeting Gold, Silver, and Bronze Level Symposium supporters. Your support of a symposium session helps symposium organizers provide a high-quality technical program and encourages participation from researchers from around the world. Visit the MRS website to learn more about the MRS Symposium Support Program and how you can share in the Society's commitment to the advancement of scientific research. MRS Presents hosts live webinars and workshops throughout the year, providing engaging educational information on cutting-edge topics in materials research as well as a variety of career development and diversity and equity events. Join us for our next online event by visiting mrs.org slash mrspresents. Just think of the impact 10,000 letters could make. Take a few minutes to send convenient, personalized letters to your representatives on Capitol Hill and let your voice be heard. Visit the Materials Voice booth in the Exhibit Hall on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Supporting the Society's core value of being inclusive and egalitarian and furthering the MRS diversity, equity, and inclusion aspiration MRS's corporate partner program focuses on advancing these values within the profession and within the society. We thank these corporate partners for joining us in diversifying materials. Joining us now is Dr. Kelsey Storzinger of Oregon State University and also the winner of this year's Nelson Buck Robinson Science and Technology Award for Renewable Energy. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. So your talk was entitled Design of Electrocatalytic Materials and Electrochemical Interfaces for Renewable Energy Conversion and Storage. Long title. Mm -hmm. Can you sum up the talk? Happy to. Uh, so we're interested in ways that we can take renewable electricity, something that I think we're all interested mm -hmm. in, and store that in both the bonds of chemicals, so those are of interest for fuels, and also transform the way that we do our chemical processes today. And so that relies on taking materials, things that we can drive these reactions on, and really understanding and designing them. So what more needs to be done with this work? Yeah, so we're really fascinated and interested by the ways that we can design catalysts. So these are the materials that really speed up reaction processes. And there's a lot of work to be done. So the things that are used industrially now for things like uh, hydrogen production and so the corresponding oxygen production that happens in water splitting are really precious metals. So they're things that are expensive, they're not very abundant. And so something that we're working on and many other people are working on too are developing alternative materials that are earth abundant. So these are based on transition metal oxides and uh, really making them both robust and very active for these reactions. So how did you get interested in all of this? My interest in material science started uh, when I was an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was taking a kind of like a survey course in material science at Northwestern University. And there was a, a page in McAllister, this is a very typical textbook for an introduction yeah. to material science course, about single crystal slip in zinc. And um, you can kind of tell from that what inspired me and what type of science I like. So it's a yes. very you know, fundamental foundational thing. But I loved that you could look at the crystal structure of that material and really deduce from just math and the way atoms were bonded, how it would deform. And so that was something that really inspired me to go into material science. So was there someone at Northwestern or even outside of the university who inspired you and helped kind of guide you? Yeah, there are lots of people along the way. Um, so that, that course was really shaping for me, but then after that I took a nanoscience course with Terry Odom at Northwestern, um, and then ultimately did research as an undergraduate in her research group, and that was something that really inspired me to go further down the path towards research. And I had some great internship opportunities that really solidified my desire for a PhD, and then I did my PhD at MIT with Yang Horn, another really great mentor um, and advisor, and those things have all really shaped the trajectory that I've gone on. So before we let you go and to mm -hmm. circle it back more to your research, where yeah. do you see this going short term, long term? If you had a crystal ball. Sure, yeah. So short term, we're really interested in understanding the actual active interface. So historically, the way that we've thought about materials design is really based on bulk properties, things that we can probe and understand in the, you know, the world around us, but in kind of ex situ conditions. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really informative. We've learned a lot from that process, but we're learning more every day about how um, these materials really are dynamic under the extreme conditions of electrocatalysis. And so we're working to better understand that interface and how it changes and transforms. Well, Dr. Kelsey Storzinger, thank you so much and congratulations once again on your big award. Thanks very much.
Well, that's a wrap on MRS TV for this year, but you can still look for previous episodes and all your favorite interviews right here and online. You can keep watching MRS TV on screens around the Hines and Sheridan. On the MRS website, in select hotels, and on YouTube and Twitter. MRS TV is over for now, but we'll be back this April for the MRS Spring Meeting in San Francisco. I'm Katie Brace, signing off. Thanks for watching.